Hi everyone, Sandman here. Today's video is brought to you by a donation from Pierre, and here's what he has to say. Sandman, I'm a level 2 MGTOW from Florida, and I run a Mercedes-Benz repair and restoration shop with my sister in Titusville, Florida. And I'm a mechanic and I have a very full and vibrant career in a field that limits my exposure to women. My sister is an amazing person who agrees with my choices and my lifestyle. We became like this through hard work, responsibility, and not having safety nets. And I chose the MGTOW lifestyle after I started to learn about women's unrealistic expectations of men, their subconscious desire to ruin happiness, and the narcissistic selfie dating culture all around us. I committed to the idea in 2012 that dating and marriage are a drain to a man's resources and a virus to his creative spirit. I have female friends, but I limit my contact with them and do not spend time with women one-on-one, -on -one. and I do not attempt to entertain romantic contact or invest great resources in them. I would be open to marrying a proper woman, but they are rare. My only real material possessions are the Mercedes-Benz collection that my mom, sister, and I own and maintain together. Many women don't like them because they are old cars, even if they have a net worth that's well into the six figures. And I'm writing you for two reasons. Number one, I'm a devout Catholic, and I attend Mass every single morning. I was always fascinated with the Catholic praise of celibacy, and I will agree any day that Catholicism and Buddhism, because they advocate celibacy, embrace and understand the importance of MGTOW. A Roman Catholic priest who embraces his position is a true man going his own way. I also like Catholicism because it sanctions the priesthood as being for men and men only, and stands firm on this belief. While other jobs have become available to women that should not be, the church keeps this one off limits. While the practice of religion is not an essential part of MGTOW, I feel that my relationship to my faith enhances it rather than serves as a crutch. I also see Jesus as a MGTOW figure. He did not bind himself to a wife and a family, and many women try to argue that he had children or a sex life, but I believe that he did not and was a true man going his own way. And the second reason I write is quite a little bit different. I recently finished a novel about a blue pill man that I have no respect for, who learns to complete his life without marriage or sex. And I'm currently writing a book about a man I admire who goes his own way. It is going to be a very long book, and it outlines his transformation over the course of a decade. As for me, I drive a golden 1983 Mercedes 300 turbo diesel with 300,000 miles on it. It's very nice and works very beautifully, down to all of its power accessories. But it keeps women away like a pile of raw cat shit in a nice handbag. Keep up the great work. Well, thanks for your comments and questions, Pierre. I'm showing pictures of women in and around cars for this particular video to thank you for your donation. Too bad I couldn't find any of them sitting in any vintage Mercedes automobiles. Anyways, the first thing I want to address is the reason I named this video The Trojan Horse. After you told me your story, I couldn't shake the feeling of fear that my intuition was giving me about your sister and your mother. My fear is that it might be possible that you are being blindsided by your sister and that she might be seeing you as a utility. I don't know your sister, but I do know this. So long as you're still single and working with her, you can divert your resources to helping her out. Again, I don't mean any disrespect. If you say that she's a great person, then that's the way it goes. But what I want you to do is to keep it in the back of your mind, that women are wild animals. And just because some of us men choose to domesticate ourselves in our society, doesn't mean that women are not running wild these days all over the place. And I'm guessing your father used to own the car repair shop, as your mother owned some of the classic cars as well. I'm hoping that I made that assumption accurately. Then again, I could be completely wrong, and you and your sister started the repair shop on your own. And of course, women don't like classic cars for the most part because classic cars only buy status for men, and it's new cars that buy status for women. These are the same types of women that go to Paris, France, and spend their time shopping at Zara, or riding the rides at Euro Disney, instead of going to the Louvre to enjoy the art, or take in the city for its design and architecture as well as culture. They might as well have gone to Titusville, Florida. When I was younger and went to Paris with such women, many of them got hard nipples from just thinking about Mickey Mouse. And there's no accounting for taste these days when it comes to women. Another reason that women don't like classic cars is because your mother and sister are co-owners, so it's basically hard to get you to part with them. Those cars also lock in the value of multiple six figures, which would be very hard to unlock if you ever got married. 
and then your wife tried to convince you to sell those vintage cars. But then again, you're going your own way, so you don't have to worry about that. My chief concern, like I said, is that your mother and sister could be subconsciously scheming against you. And that's the power of the subconscious mind, that no one really knows what's going on. Anyways, now I want to talk about religion and MGTOW. I made mention before that a religious man is not a man going his own way, but he's going the way of that particular religion, god or code that he follows. And I've heard some people say that men going their own way are just as faithful as other men from other religions. And it's also good that you mention that you don't use faith as a crutch. That's something I did in the past and it just shows weakness in a person's character. For many people, it's often easier to believe in the fairy tale that heaven exists and when you die, you get to go there, rather than living your life and trying to be satisfied while doing so. Religion is also a Trojan horse to some extent as well. But there is a rational reason why societies organized around religion dominate the others. Empires built on faith have greater numbers of men believing in self-sacrifice. And self-sacrifice of men is what builds empires. That's how it's always been done. And religion also cements Tradcon or traditional conservative ideals firmly into a culture, as well as firmly into men. But I also believe that in the past, when Europe was predominantly Christian, the state needed a way to direct the creative energy of idle men that were going their own way. In the Middle Ages, it was actually the MGTOW monks that figured out how to create musical harmonies. Yes, a bunch of men going their own way figured out how to use music and how it worked to create the great symphonies that we enjoy today. Monks also spent much of their time preserving knowledge before the printing press, and they were the ones that hand-copied manuscripts and safeguarded what few libraries remained in Europe. I also don't fully agree with the idea that Roman Catholic priests shouldn't be allowed to marry. East Orthodox men are allowed to marry before becoming ordained priests. And because of that, women are allowed to marry priests in the East. And that's why I believe the Orthodox Church hasn't splintered as much as the Catholic Church in the West. How else can women get access to the resources of the Church if they can't partake in its hierarchy, or if they can't marry men that are members of it? Think about all the Lutheran, Protestant, as well as East Orthodox women that get to enjoy the spoils of the money found in the collection plates in all those denominations. From that point of view, I agree with you completely that the Catholic Church became as strong as it did because it didn't give away its money to women and children of the priests. So you can say that the Church itself went its own way. And to become a priest or nun, you aren't allowed to have children. So the Church gets stronger and wealthier from generation to generation, instead of recycling the wealth that people give it back to the people themselves. I guess from that perspective, you can assume that the other denominations of Christianity are simping when compared to Catholicism. Like I said, Catholicism could be classified as a religion that's going its own way. And my main concern about following any faith or religion is that it's based on the first-hand accounts of people that lived over 2,000 years ago. As a society, we barely remember what happened 100 years ago. But it doesn't matter if the story of Christianity is real or not, as it's been used to motivate men to do great and terrible things at the same time throughout history for their kings and their countries. And in the past, religion was used as an excuse to get people to do things they otherwise wouldn't do today. So the fact that you're following your own faith based on your own choice, and not something based on social pressure, makes me respect you. But when I stopped being Christian and started exploring things on my own, I discovered deeper truths to life. And I believe what we call spirituality is based more on math and science. And I ultimately believe that many of the supernatural miracles that many of us think happened in the past have a lot to do with changing or bending the laws of physics. I don't think these things can only be done by a god, but in fact I believe that men who know how to manipulate the laws of physics and use knowledge how to manipulate matter at a higher frequency or dimension are capable of doing such things as well. The internal combustion engine is understood. We put fuel in it, and that fuel vaporizes and ignites in the engine and basically makes the pistons move and the piston's energy gets transmitted to the wheels and the car and ultimately make the car move. It's not magic, it's actually science. But if you believe that Jesus walked on water, then you probably believe that he changed his molecular state so that he could actually walk on that water. I'm just saying that Jesus might have been some type of lord of quantum mechanics or physics if he existed at all. He was also known to appear in more than one place at the same time. He could have been the master of teleportation. Pierre, what I also find interesting about you is that you're also saying that you're willing to marry a proper woman and that these types of women are rare. And I'm assuming that your sister is one of these rare types of women. 
Many of us here on YouTube would like to know what it takes to be a proper woman, and we'd love to hear how you classify them. And with regards to publishing your book, you should choose CreateSpace. They, they publish books on demand, and you don't have to go through a large publishing company that will charge you huge fees for printing. Anyways, that's all I've got to say for today. Pierre, I just want to give you a warning. Your mother and sister could be like Trojan horses, acting behind your defenses. You should try and see things from a different light, unless you already have. After all, Christianity tells men to honor their mothers and their fathers. Does that mean honor your mother even when her subconscious mind is not acting in your best interests, but hers instead? Pierre, is it also possible that the cars your family owns represent the carrot keeping you working? I'm sure you didn't expect me to come out with all of these criticisms in this particular video. But if you haven't thought about these things already, then it's important to do so. Or do these cars simply represent social proof to clients that your family is willing to invest in the brand that you do service on, i.e. Mercedes? The cars also represent status to your clients, most of which I'm assuming are men. And your sister and mother might be keeping the cars because of the social proof they get from those male clients, and it basically boosts their confidence in your repair work. Anyways, please write back and let everyone know what you think. And thanks again for your donation. With regards to everyone else, thanks again for taking your daily dose of red pills. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.